mean, let's talk about your first week. Well, tell me honestly what, what that's like. I mean, it's kind of, I don't know, is it, is it shock? Is it fear? Is it, what is it? I think it's all above, you know, just anxiety, fear, like you said, um, emotions all over the place, you know, but definitely had a lot of joy. When you wake up, you know, and you look up and you see where you are, you t explain that. Just, just holding on to uh, the thankfulness, you know, being thankful. You're getting emotional. Yeah. Why? It's tough. What's tough? Being locked up for 20, 20 something years. What kept you going? I think I think um, what kept me going a lot was um, um, my Lord and Savior. You know, number one, my parents, um, and uh, the fact that I was blessed with such an um, amazing team. You knew they were fighting for you outside. Yes, yes. So just. Uh, Back to being thankful, you know, just being out free, just, just, there's so much involved, you know, in, in fighting this system where you really need a system to beat the system or even so, you know, I was blessed. I was blessed in a way, but not because um, I got robbed half my life, you know, and um, it's uh, tough. When the judge told, talked about that with you, right? You have another 25 years ahead of you. I hope more. <laughs> right. But, you know, when he's talking about a third of your life is, was in prison, a third of your life you had, and then a third yeah. of your life is left to go. Yes. It's hard to take that, right? He says you can be angry. You've got to be angry. <sighs> I look at, like, anger as an emotion, but uh, I try not to feed off that. As far as the judge... Uh, I listen to every word, and um, I wish I could play it back, you know, and just kind of work on it, but um, I'm thankful for him, you know, just um, being a very honorable judge, and um, he's actually an answered prayer. I sit in a cell, and I prayed for an honest judge, and I got one, you know, so. When you were behind bars, what, what else did you pray for? Just protection over my family and just, um, I prayed for other people, you know, just uh, a lot of praying, a lot of praying. Were you a praying man before you went to prison? You know what, I, I used to go to church before I got locked up and um, it definitely got me rooted deeper, you know, and, and trusting and believing, believing in him and, you know, when, you, when you're in rock bottom in a prison cell and you know I think it was an easy choice for me to come to where just um, surrendering everything to God and putting in his hands where believing that this battle wasn't was really not even mine you know it, it was it was his battle and um, it, it works out it worked out pretty good you know so far was there a point where you lost hope you know not really you know I just I just kept my spirits up and um, you know I always had a good team behind me and the team just got stronger and stronger and just people believing in me and and um, mm -hmm. you know so the, the hope was always there you know did I have bad days absolutely you know absolutely when you were in there on those bad days, um, you know, what, what kind of kept you going? Your mom said that, that you viewed Dana Ireland as somewhat this angel who was going to someday make it right. W would you say that that's true or was that something she had hoped? You know, um, never seen her, never knew her. Um, God bless her, you know, and the reason why I say that, that uh, I'm sure she's in heaven. 
you know, and I'm thinking she's looking down and saying, this, this, this is not the right guy in prison, you know. I'm sure of that because I know I'm innocent, you know. When you were told by Ken and the Innocence Project, we have more DNA that shows you weren't there. Mm -hmm. I mean, they already had DNA at your trial. Right. They already said that. Right. So what made you think this was going to be different? Uh, I think what I, well, the technology, of course, and the science behind it, because it's still advancing and, you know, being locked up. I don't have any research or anything, but, you know, you're watching TV and, and you know, they got some medical science on TV and, and um, knowing the technology has grown and, but not, just, just um, my team, my team was awesome, you know. Ken Lawson, Jennifer Brown, Barry Sheck, Susan Friedman, it, the list is on, all the students and, you know, just uh, fighting for me, you know, fighting for my innocence. It, it made it easier. You had a stellar team, that is for sure. <laughs> I, yes, I prayed for it, you know, I prayed for it. And um, God definitely answered my prayers on that. Let's go back many years. Let's go back to the time you were arrested. Mm -hmm. What, tell me about that day. Tell me about the events of that day that you remember and, and what you felt when you were getting arrested for this. You obviously had known about the Dana Island murder. I mean, that, that happened in your community. Right, Okay. right. I was definitely shocked that they came after me because number one, I had nothing to do with nothing. I, I didn't even know Pauline. Never knew him. I never associated with, with him once. You know, that's why people were told this story like, oh, he had to have known this or he had to have been there. It's like, no, no, you know. He, so were you, what, what were you doing when they came and got you? Were you at home? Were you at work? What were you doing when they I came were, I was on Kauai. Yeah, 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 I was on Kauai. Why? I lived there, yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that you lived yeah, on yeah. Kauai. Yeah, yeah, I was working for the state. I was a nurse on Kauai and, you know, so. So how did they come and get you? <laughs> with, uh, with the police. <laughs> the no, police. but you were, were you at work? What were you um, doing? I think they did come and get me once while I was at work, you know, and, um, oof. It, it was, I was just, it, the shock was just indescribable, you know, indescribable, you know. Did you, did you tell them, like, I didn't do that? You know, what, I know it was a long time ago, but did you tell them, like, I, I didn't do this, I don't know what's, what's happening? Absolutely, I, you know, you know, once, you know, we were moving out and stuff, I was like, what is this about? And, you know, it's, it was a nightmare at that time. It was a nightmare, you know. And the nightmare lasted for kind of a long time. I think it became more than a nightmare because now I'm living it, you know, so. You were in prison for kind of a while when, or jail when Frank's trial happened. Right. I'm sure you're following it closely. You, you didn't know Frank, but you I were watching know. this trial and thinking your life and future kind of hangs now in the balance with his. Yeah. So, what were you thinking as his trial was going on? Whew. I think I was still in shock. Like, I just couldn't, couldn't fathom it, you know what I mean? Like, so, when you that, was a, that was a long time ago. That was a long time ago, you know. I, I don't even remember where I was. I think I might have been in Halava High or, or Hilo Jail, so. So you think you're going into this trial and you think, I'm gonna win. I should win, you know. Number one, I didn't even own the Volkswagen at the time of the crime, you know. But, you know, I, I think I just couldn't get a fair jury also, you know, where someone to just focus on the facts. But as it went on, I, I knew I wasn't going to win already, uh, you know, because right from the jury selection, I knew I wasn't going to win because 
the judge was allowing jurors who already thought I was guilty to be a juror. Uh, I, you know. You didn't even own the beetle when yes. the crime happened. Did it come out to the jury that you didn't even own the, the car that it, they're it, saying? It really came out like, not really. Actually, it didn't. You know, they kind of just got put into evidence and that was it, you know. I wish I could have just stood up in trial and say, here, you know, I, according to the law, is like one reasonable doubt you must acquit if there's one reasonable doubt or any, or any reasonable doubt. And uh, I just had fact after fact after fact and um, it wasn't enough, you know. You think that jury would have convicted you no matter what? Um, yeah, yeah. Why? Uh, number one, Pauline got convicted. You know, the, the media put it out there so hard on me you know, and my brother, you know, that um, this is this is what happened, and and you know, I mean, you, we had wanted dead posters. Last night was the first time I seen the poster. Wanted dead posters all over the town with my, me and my brothers, uh, my brothers and I, faces on it. Tell me about this unknown male number one. You know. They, they can't find this person. Do you feel like there's, st those people are still skeptical about that. Do you feel like until they have this person, and it could take years, they can't just sit there and say, Ian didn't do it. Ian is innocent. You know, I've, this past week I've been going, venturing into the community a little bit, you know, with my team and, and, and uh, I've been getting positive views. You know, a lot of people have been coming up today, just, just today. Uh, you know, but um, I'm, I hope I hope I don't run across that other pe that other side. You know, you know, and, and but you and, know it exists. You know that side exists. Yeah. I mean, I, I hear it. You know, mm -hmm. I get emails saying, "Are you sure it's not a technicality? Are you sure he's actually innocent?" You know, what do you want to say to those people? God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. You know, just um. Do some research. You know, I hope this interview helps helps them out a little bit, you know, but for me, I really don't care what they think, you know, because uh, God knows and I know and my team knows and it's all that matters. I want to talk just about how you told Sean to take that deal. And Sean says it was a family decision and you That's my younger that. brother, yeah. Tell me about that. That's your baby brother, right? Yes, yes, love him. So tell me about that decision and how you... The decision was really easy for me. He didn't want to take it. He said, no way, I'm, I'm, I'm not leaving you. You know, and I said, no. Go home to your kids. He had three babies, you know. I said, go home to your kids and... Because and, he was a good, he still is a good man, you know. And uh, take care of your kids, you know. And um, you know, there's no sense in two brothers being locked up. You know, as double financial stress, double that would probably kill my mom. You know, I, I and dad. You know, so. So you told him take it. Yes. What finally convinced him? Me telling him. Yeah. He feels guilty a little bit about that. I hope not, but it's hard not to, yeah. yeah. Your mom told me when she went to visit you at Sawaro, you told her not to come back because you don't like watching her walk away. <sighs> yeah. You said that. Yeah. yeah. What was so hard about watching her walk away? I mean, I wouldn't wish this on any mother. Yeah. But um, it's kind of selfish on my side because, uh, you know, it's moms. You know. The, 
it that um, that stuck with her? Would she have listened to you if this didn't happen? You know, she's getting older now. She's definitely older now. I mean, when um, when this first went down, I, I think she was a little younger than I am now. You know, so yeah. You know, the whole family suffered. You know, I mean, as far as back to my brother, where um, <clears throat> you know, I told him, "Hey, go out there and take care of your kids." I had a son also. So he got raised without a father. I was never there, you know. So <clears throat> he was there when, when you know, I, in the in the courtroom and stuff. So very thankful that um, he kept he kept that door open for a relationship with me and stuff. It must have been hard, right, for the family because they were oh, ostracized. Totally. Did Trauma tell me traumatized. I mean, as far as the kids and everything, you know, you know. Uh, I'll tell you an incident that happened in school with one of the girls, you know, where the teacher put, literally put my niece up in front of the class and told him that your uncle is a rapist, you know, a murder. You know, and, and this, you know, this beautiful girl didn't deserve that, you know. How so, she know? Scarred. Card. That's Sean's girl, you know. So, and the list goes on, you know. You know how it is when you're kids, you know, you look back, it's like, you know, what is that saying? Sticks and stones can break your bones, but names and Words never. Words cannot hurt me. That's a lie. Yeah, I think. Uh, Say that again. Say that again. What? Tell me about that, that nursery rhyme. Words definitely hurt. Yeah. I'm sure it's stuck with her. You can heal from a broken bone, but, you know, words would just stay with you for the rest of your life. Yeah. I'm almost done. I know you're tired of it. I'm, I'm good. I'm you're, just, you're you, you took me there a little. Yeah, I'm sorry. Your mom survived breast cancer. Yes. She's now dealing with lung cancer. Yes. Having this happen when it did, is that maybe something that will help, help her heal? Because she didn't want to die without this happening. Ooh, I don't think I could take it, being locked up and lose one of my parents, you know, just, I was, I was telling my, amazing lawyer driving over here where, uh, you know, stress and worry really is a killer. Until you see it or, or experience it through a family member or even yourself. And for me, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing it. But her energy is definitely better. So I, I, I hope, I know so that me being home now She's gonna win. She's gonna. She's gonna beat this and, and fight it. You know. I'm just thankful I'm there, holding her. What's your focus now? You. I know you're gonna go and speak to some law students. Hopefully, yes. you let them see that that these things happen, and 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 you educate them on how this can happen. But what's ahead for you? Are you are you going to? try to get a job as a nurse again. What are you going to do? I, I think that wasn't meant to be, you know. Uh, I'm just going to put it in God's hands and see who he puts in front of me, you know. But as far as working right now, can I work? Yes. Mentally, I'm not ready, you know, because I've been told what to do, you know, just in so many years and, you know, it's, uh, it ain't easy. It ain't easy. Yeah, I mean, that's gotta be hard for you when you get up in the morning, right? You can eat what you want, what? what? I can eat when I want, or what I want, you know? Or I don't have to eat, you know? So. 
what's been the biggest transition for you when you're at home when you wake up? Because, I mean, right now you have your team and they've been taking you around, they've been helping you. When they're gone and it's just it's just you, Ian. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what's what's the hardest transition for you going to be? Everything, <laughs> because everything's changed. You know, you know. I don't even know how to use a phone. You okay. know, I, I'm learning. You know, a little bit. You got to press this, and but um, everything, everything's changed. So, I literally have to learn how to do everything again. That's why I don't think I could work right now because I still gotta learn. I mean, I, don't, I gotta get a driver's license. I gotta literally start all over. But um, I'm just thankful that uh, I can start all over and and, and um, enjoy the rest of my life. Yeah. You know, take care of my parents. You know, number one priority, take care of my parents, you know, so. Are you going to live in Hilo with your parents to figure out, get things going, take care of mom? Yes, yes, yes. So, one day at a time, yeah? Yeah. Just like uh, doing time in a, in a prison, you know, cell. One day at a time. Just day and just keep pushing through. It's a, it's, it's a total different way of doing time compared to someone who did something, you know, because if that person was having a bad day, he can look back and say, yeah, I screwed up. I made a mistake. As for me, I never had that opportunity where if I did have a bad day, I couldn't say, yeah, but I, you know, I just had to, it, total different doing time. You just focus on the next day, one step in front of the other? Ooh, minute by minute, you know. You were eligible for this money from the state for being wrongfully convicted. Mm -hmm. There's a technicality that you're not yet qualified. Mm -hmm. and yet, I don't think anybody disputes that you deserve the money based on the way the law is written. Right. What do you what do you want to do about that? You know, obviously, there are multiple ways you can handle this, or uh -huh. you can go take a lawsuit to the courts. You can try and get the governor to do, to help you out. You know, what is it that you want to do? And if you do get the money, what are you going to do with it? I mean, right as what do I want to do with it? Um, thank God for my lawyers. I'll just let them handle that. You know, I'll let them handle that as far as, you know, getting compensation and, you know. What do you want to do with the money? Nothing, <laughs> you know. You haven't had money in a long time to spend yeah. how you want. Um, same back to just taking care of my parents and, you know, and, and the kids and stuff, because everyone suffered. It, it, I'm not really an I person, never was. So um, I, I think everybody deserves a little bit, you know, of something. Every one in my family suffered. So what are the types of prayers you have from now on? You know, I, I think it's it's past prayers. It, it's, it's just sort of relationship with Jesus Christ and just talking to him throughout the day. What do you say? Thank you. Some people could turn that around and say, why me for 25 years? You know, God says he only allows so much we can handle. And uh, I, believe me, there was days where, you know, God, you know, I'm not Superman, you know, but he was right. Do you have any anger then? I never was an angry person, so um, no. Really? It, it seems biased. You know, it, it's easy to say. 
I mean, yeah, 25 years of my life. I mean, if that's a whole different conversation, you know, like 25 years of my life. When, when, you, when I really think about it, you know, of, um, I mean, if you really want me to go there on that, I mean, I, I feel what they did to me was the same what they charged me with. You know, I, I feel that they murdered 25 years of my life. They kidnapped me away from my family. They raped me of being a son, a father, a brother, an uncle, a husband. You know, so I guess it's hard not to be angry when you look at it like that, you know. What changes you back to not be angry? God. Yeah. All glory to him. He's real. He's real. He answered every prayer that I put out there. You know, I ain't no, you know, religious, you know, but um, for me, the relationship that I have with him, you know, he, he's, he's an awesome God. You know, so... This next uh, journey in my life, uh, I'm gonna see how it is with this, with, with God in my life, you know? The fact that the real killer got away with this, I mean, does that bother you? Oh, you know, he got away with it so far, you know? I pray to God we catch him. You know, um, my team is gonna do everything they possibly can to work with the prosecution in, in um, finding this guy, finding this unknown DNA, you know, and um, not just the Hawaii Innocence Project, but also New York, Barry Shack, Susan Friedman. So they're, they're definitely invested in it, you know. They're about justice, you know. That's what it is, right? It's justice, finding out who did. What if it turns out he's dead? I mean, does that, is just finding out well, who really did it mean something to you? I, I think it'll mean something for the Ireland family. I, I, I hope it does. I hope it, it, it um, gives them peace, you know, because, you know, back to the DNA and, you know, uh, I, I wouldn't be at peace with myself knowing that the real person is still out there and an innocent man is incarcerated. Ken hugs you. You're like, t tell me about that moment. Um, good energy. When, when, when Ken hugs you, it's, it's uh, real. You, you seem know. shocked though. Um, man, I, you know, I don't know how to describe it. It's um, just real. Were you shocked when the judge said, take the cuffs off and let him go home. Um, I was after you know when I was listening to his um, his speech and 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 I was really focused on him and his words and um, just uh, surprised that not, I shouldn't say surprised but um, how much he really was listening and and taking it all in and just covering everything, you know, what happened in front of his courtroom. That's his courtroom. You know, he's, he's, the judge is the judge and he's the one who has all the authority to get me out. I mean, my team can do what they, they did, but at the bottom of, at the end of the day, the judge is the ultimate decision maker. And when he said, when he said it was all good and you, Tell me that moment when you got the cuffs off. Thank God. Thank God. They don't take the cuffs off, off. They don't take them off often when you're outside of the prison, right? Right. So you knew that, I mean, that was, you knew that that was it. You were free. It was real. That. It was real. You still yeah. seemed in shock to me when we looked at the video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is, I guess it's an emotion that I, I haven't had too much experience with yeah. or have to, have to deal with, you know, the shock, you know. Hugging so. your mom. Great. 
Was that the first time you could hug her or were you allowed to hug her in Saguaro or when she visited? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I could hug her and, and hold her hand and, you know, throughout the, the visit and that, that, was, that was great, but tough, you know, at the end of the day. I, I think I could handle it, but I knew it was tough for her mother. Yeah. It had to be.